they accepted me into pilot training under the condition that I could pass a, what they call a pull motor test. Do you know what a pull motor test? They put you in this little make-believe airplane, and it's on a it's on a, a swivel, and you have a stick here, and, then, and and it's on springs. If you just sit there, it'll fall over. But you you take this stick and you try to keep keep it right side up, and I guess I was really good at that. And this guy told me, "Gee, that's re that's really good. You're accepted into pilot training." So here I went to pilot training, Bainbridge, Georgia, uh, as a cadet. I was a lot of students in my class, but they were all uh, off most of them were officers. I think uh, 419 students, as I recall, and there were like nine of us were cadets, and everybody else was an officer, college graduates, uh, aeronautical engineers, PhDs, master's degrees, and here I am, a cadet, made D's and F's in high school, competing with those guys. And uh, they put me in an AT6 Texan, 600 horsepower Franklin engine. Uh, didn't have a tricycle landing gear. You couldn't land the thing without it rolling over. I mean, it's famous for ground loops and knocking the gear down and, and damaging a wing and get the prop, break the propeller. So now you have to change the engine, and they hate they hate it when you do that. <laughs> but uh, I had a I had an instructor by the name of Carl Smith from uh, not Little Rock, Arkansas, but a little town near Little Rock, Arkansas. That was 1953. That's, that's a pretty good memory. But Carl was a wonderful guy, and he's sitting in the back, and I'm sitting in the front, and, and he's flying the airplane, I think. And after four or five flights, he said, pull over to headquarters there for a minute. I pulled over there, and, and he opened the canopy and got out. He said, take it around a pattern three times, make three landings, and then come in. I said, what? I said, I haven't flown this thing yet. He said, he said you can do it. And I remember ta taxiing out. I told myself, it's either I, I, can, I, can, I can leave the engine running, jump out, climb over the fence, and hitchhike back home, or I can take this airplane off the ground and kill myself. And I had decided which one I'd rather do, and I said, I chose suicide. So I lined up on the runway, and I, I guessed that thing, and went down the runway and made a good landing, a good takeoff, and uh, came back around, made a good landing, and did it again, and did it again, and I pulled up to, to uh, headquarters, like my, Carl Smith told me to, and everybody ran over and said, those are the best landings we've seen today. And I, I said, what? I mean, I, I, my, my overall plan was to, I, I was on a four-year enlistment. I had to stay four years. My plan was to learn to fly an airplane, and then when my four years was up, deliberately wash out of the program and go home. Peggy, Peggy was at home in going, going to uh, college at University of Houston, and uh, I didn't know what I was doing, but 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 then uh, uh, all my buddies were were doing pretty good, and I was doing pretty good, and uh, uh, I got to the point where I didn't want to wash out because I I, I I didn't want the embarrassment of it, and I I didn't want anybody to think that the, the, that they could do it, but I couldn't do it, and. Uh, So I graduated from the T-6 and went to the T-28, which is a tricycle landing gear and made by North American Airline, they, uh, North American Aviation. They made really good airplanes. And uh, the T-28 was easy to fly, and then I got into jets, and they were easy to fly. And when I graduated, uh, in, I think it was September of 1953, after 13 months in pilot training, I finished way down in my class uh, in academics. But I finished near the top in in, in pilot training, and uh, I remember I don't remember exactly why, but I had to make a speech somewhere. It wasn't at the graduation, but it was at something else. And and there were there were three of us that had to make speeches. A guy that was good in academics, 
one that was an overall student, and then me from the flying part of it. The speech had to be 10 minutes or 15 minutes. You had to write the speech, you give it to the colonel. He had to sign off on the speech, and then you had to give the speech exactly as I had written it. Well, first of all, they had the guy in academics, top student in academics, gave a speech. And everybody laughed and applauded, you know, and there were lots of people there. And then the, it, it came my turn to, to speak, and they introduced me as Cadet Finn, blah, 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 blah. Finished 419 students, fin finished about 350th in academics, and all my buddies stood up and clapped and threw the their hats up in the air, and, and, and it really made me mad, and a colonel sitting behind me. And uh, I took my speech and tore it up. The wind was blowing, and I threw it up in the air, and it blew right back in the colonel's face sitting behind me. <laughs> and I said, listen, you guys. I said, I may not be the tallest tree in the forest, I said, but and, and I don't know how many rivets there, I don't know the wingspan of an F-100. I said, but I am smart enough to know that if I have to fly it through a hole that size, I'll go out and measure it before I leave. And I said, if I, if I ever need an airplane built, I'll call you. But if you ever need one flown, you call me. And it was silence. And, uh, and then everybody started applauding and, and clapping. And, and uh, they'd have thrown me out of pilot training if, 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 if the audience had not come to my side. And, and the, the, the colonel told me, whispered in my ear, he said, you're the luckiest guy to ever lived. 